Hi everyone. It's a cold, windy, windy day today, so I am going to show you how I make my dog treats. My dogs love these treats. They sit and wait patiently for these treats. I hope you like it. I hope you subscribe. Please subscribe, like, and give me a comment and let me know what you think. I sure enjoy those comments. I will see you in a minute. Bye. Okay, today we are going to make a dog treats. Peanut butter dog treats. And I'm doubling the recipe, so it calls for two cups of wheat flour, so it'll be four. But what I do with my flour is I loosen it all up. Because you don't want it packed, that's why your recipes might not be turning out sometimes as that flour gets packed. So that's what I do there. And then I'm going to add, it calls for one and a half teaspoons baking powder. I'm going to put in three teaspoons of baking powder. Sorry. Three teaspoons of baking powder. And it just gives them a lighter a, a lighter, fluffier taste. So, in here it calls for a half a cup of peanut butter. In here I put a full cup. It calls for one egg. I put two eggs. I'm doubling the recipe. I will show you the recipe. So, you can freeze the frame and take that down. My dogs love these treats. I make them for them all the time. So, instead of the one cup of water that you see, I'm going to use the whey that I have when I make cream cheese. Here is the whey. You can use whey in place of water for your tortillas, for your bread making, your cookies, whatever you want. It's a probiotic. So we're going to add the two cups to this. And I'm going to go ahead and mix it up with this and then when I add the flour I will start that on low once you break up that 
Got my oven going at 350 and heating up. So once that gets in there, we're gonna add the flour. So let's stop this and let's. Well, We're going to put on our bread hook, but first we want to add the four cups of flour. See how that's about Then this I will use to add to if it needs more flour. it's starting to but you can tell it's wet so we'll add a little bit more flour probably the rest of this flour down in there. Still too, it's still too sticky because you're going to roll this out. 
So let's start with adding just a little bit more flour. Quarter cup at a time while it splashes out on you. No, no, no. They're waiting patiently. They know when it's time to for treats. Now you can see it's still sticking to the bottom. So we're probably going to add another quarter cup. I want you to see how the dough gets. The consistency you want. You want it a little bit dry. You don't want it real dry, but you don't want it real wet. Unless you refrigerated it, but you see how it's still sticking? And so this is the first time I've made it with the whey. So that could be a difference. Always made it with water. Now it's really pulling away. But Okay, let's feel it now. Now you can tell there's a big difference, but it's still a little, but it's sliding right off of there. Just a little sticky. Let's see, it's a little sticky. So we'll add one more. Turn this back on. Add a little bit more, probably one more quarter cup. So instead of four cups of flour to double the recipe, I probably put about five. So that's the difference that the whey is making from the water. Every liquid is different. Milk, you wouldn't need as much milk if you were using milk. Um, Thank you. 
See how that's really pulling away now? It's good. You want a soft but firm dough. Yes, much better. Because when you're going to need it a little bit in the flour and and get it, it's better to feel it with your hands. So let's bring it on out. Take that off. The softer the dough I found, the better. Not too soft, but pretty soft because you want to bake them till they're brown, really brown, because that's what makes them crisp and crunchy for your dogs. You don't want them soft like a cookie. They want a treat. They have to have crunchiness to um, for their teeth. But all you do is knead it like you're doing bread dough and that way you get a feel of you want to feel it. You can feel a little bit of sticky, but not too much. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this ball in half. Set that one aside. start mushing this one out. Square rectangle. Just start rolling it out. Now, depending on how thick you want them, I'm going to have to turn that a little bit, is how th thick you're going to roll them out.
camera. <laughs> the camera's in my way. That's okay. We will make it work. Switch your sides there. So that's a pretty good thickness right there. Just put your hands on it. You can feel the thickness. So what I do is I use cookie cutters. I use the heart, the star, and usually the circle. But today, I'm going to use my thing I use for the canning. They don't spread, so you can put them really close together. You can take them if you want, I don't. I just put them in and they start getting brown on the bottom, I just flip them over and around on the other side. They kind of really good and crunchy, and they also do. They really do. They really do. They like to know when I'm out, and I don't have any. And I tell them, I want to make some, I don't like this. Every day, they, every time I come into the kitchen, they're right there, waiting for their treats. So let's get some more cut real quick. So there you have your full pan. Put it into a 350 oven. I put them on the bottom shelf and they will get nice and brown on the inside or on the bottom and then I will flip them over. I can just use my hands. My, I've been in the kitchen so long. My fingertips or whatever you want to call it. They could touch. So... They'll bake for about 25 minutes. I'll flip them over. You'll see the brown. When I come back, we'll see the brown, the, how they browned on the bottom. We'll flip them over and I'll let you, I'll get the rest ready and I'll be back. Bye. Okay, I will show you. They've been in there. Let me shut this eye room so you'll see they're brown. So just flip them over. And let the other side brown. Let's see how these ones look. Now see these aren't quite ready, so but I've moved them from the top to the bottom and I have three sheet pans full of dog treats and I have this left and I will show you what I do with this Just bring it all together. And stretch it out, whatever. Just go ahead and mess with it. And there you have it. No way, so you don't have to go through rolling up every little thing. So, but these browned up really quick. Now, if you have an older dog that their teeth are, you know, 
you can make these soft for them. They don't have to be crunchy. Depends on how long you bake them. Even just this with the just the one side, they'll be soft enough for the older pet to chew. Let's check these. And you'll see the other side. See, they're already brown. So let's take you over here. And this is what I do. Pour them on out. Woo, that hurt my wrist. <laughs> So, there you go. That is a total of, so you have over a hundred treats that that recipe, when you double it, makes it. You get about 50 when you don't, and that's a good amount of treats. And it's way less than buying stuff, and they love them. It's way less than buying treats at the store. And um, the dogs will love them. They love them. Back up. They just love their treats. I'm telling you, they love them. Hi, huh, Negaloo. You love them, Negaloo? You're welcome, baby girl. You love them too, Dr. the Bill. I'll give you some more in a bit. Say goodbye. Speak. 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 Say goodbye. Come on. Up. Up. Say goodbye. Good girl. Up, up. <laughs>